tile maps are the backbone of many types of games levels, but in Godot they work in a bit of a particular way. You can create them with a single texture, but you can also create them with individual sprite, like I've done in this scene. That's what we'll learn how to do in this video. In the description below you'll find a link to this repository, and if you head to the start folder, the number 5 corresponds to this video's project. When you first launch the project, that's how it will look like. You have a character and a tileset folder in which you will find the mines tileset as an individual texture. And in the mines folder, you will find the tileset broken down into many pieces. Let's use that to create our tileset resource. To create your tileset in Godot, you want to lay down your sprites in a scene with collisions enabled, static bodies in that case. In the scene menu, you can convert it to a tileset. At least that's how it is now in Godot 2. We'll want to use snapping because it's better if we can easily place our sprites into the scene. So let's enable snapping, show the grid, and configure it. The sprites are 128 times 128 pixels. So I'll use half that size for the grid step. And once you've done so, just close the window to update the grid. Now we have that. Before we can drag and drop our sprites, we have to add a root. So add a node. I invite you to use a node because we can't move it by mistake. With the node selected, we can finally drag and drop our sprites and they will snap into the scene. Once you export your tiles, they will be organized by their name from A to Z. It's a bit strange to me being used to working with regular tile sets, but that's how it works in Godot. So be careful about your names. They are always identified by their unique names. Also, be sure to not use the same name twice in the scene, otherwise it will not work properly. I've added the background color, the floor and two floor variations. These don't need any collisions. As far as these four are concerned, we are done. Now let's add some walls. I'll get the walls starting with the top. We have to be careful to always select the node to add the sprite as a child of the root node. And I'll start with the top wall, followed by right, then bottom and left. This is the order I'm using as a template for this project to easily keep track of everything I'm doing. If we leave the walls as they are now, the player will not be able to collide with them. For the walls to block the player, we have to mark them as static bodies with a collision shape. So let's select the first wall, add a static body 2D. And as a child of this static body, we'll need a collision shape 2D. In order for the shape to work, we have to go to the top of the inspector and in the shape slot, which is empty for now, we should add a new rectangle shape 2D, scale it up, and it will automatically snap to the grid. That way, the entire wall will block the player. We can do the same for the other walls. Select the static body 2D and to duplicate it, press Ctrl D. Then drag and drop it onto the wall right to set it as a child of this one. And you'll want to move it. Be sure to select the move tool. You can use the W key. If you have the select tool, you will automatically select the collision shape. We want to move the static body itself to align with the sprite. Let's do the same for the bottom and the left walls. Every time I'm selecting the static body 2D and with the move tool, I offset it so it's centered on the sprite. To make sure that we've done things right, you have to go down the inspector and make sure that the position is set to 0, 0. Note that when we duplicate our static bodies, the collision shape is shared and it's because all the sprites have the same size that I told you to duplicate it. Look at what happens if I scale or change the size of one of these. All the shapes update because it's the same collision shape that they are all using. 
Aside from that, the system is a bit cumbersome, as you can see. It doesn't really follow Godot's logic of making things easy at the expense of flexibility from time to time. It's quite the contrary. I have a sprite here that's a lot larger than the others. And for Godot, that's not a problem. Tiles can be completely mixed in shape and size. No problem, you can use them with its system. So let's add the large pillar down the hierarchy and add a new static body 2D. We have to add it manually because as I explained before, if we were to duplicate our shape, it would use the same shape resource. So we want to create a new one. Collision shape 2D. At the top of the inspector, we'll create a new rectangle shape 2D. Scale it. I'll take care of all the other sprites in the background and see you in a second to convert our tile set. Phew, it's done. Let's save the scene and then head to the scene menu, convert to, pick tile set, and save your tile set in the tile sets folder. Call it mine.tres. You have to add the extension for it to work. And now we can use the tile set. Create a new scene again. We'll add a node 2D, maybe that will be our level. Then below the node 2D, let's add a tile map. If I recommend to add a node 2D, that's just so that we can move our level, we can offset it if we were to make a mistake. When you select the tile map, you will see a tile set slot at the top of the inspector. Click on it to load the tile set. And in the tile set folder, grab your mines.tres. When you've done that, be sure to modify the base cell size to the base sprite size you have on your tile set. In our case, it's 128 times 128. And you can click and drag on the scene with your tile map selected to start drawing tiles. On the tile picker on the left, click on anything to make it the active tile, and then you'll be able to paint the level. If you select the large pillar, you'll see how you can select a four by four square tile. If you try to override a regular tile, however, it won't draw the entire image. It will only draw that one corner of it. So there are some limitations to how the tile sets work in Godot currently. But when we look at the asset library, we'll look at some tools we can use to work a bit more easily with that.